Um, trade between the EU and Russia over the past 10 years has increased uh, dramatically, but uh, we can see some persis uh, persisting patterns, which are especially that uh, Russia exports largely uh, raw materials while uh, it imports uh, technology-intense uh, goods from, uh, from Europe. Uh, what does it take to change this pattern? Well, this pattern reflects, of course, some natural factors that will not be easy to change. Um, certainly uh, from the side of the European Union for sure the fact of uh, uh, producing a strong effort towards uh, alternative energies will uh, uh, reduce to some extent uh, this dependence which are, however is going to stay high from, uh, from Russia. And something else may be done in terms of that diversification of the geographical sources. And from the point of view of Russia, uh, you hinted already at, the, at their interest for, the, uh, for high technologies. They will be more and more a, a player also in uh, non-energy sectors. Um, but of course the development of their economy in, non -en in the non-energy sectors will uh, in turn depend on uh, something that uh, is important for them and not only for foreign investors in Russia, that is the predictability of public policies, which has not been a strong point of Russia so far. But when you speak of predictability, I think another word to describe this would be to improve the investment climate uh, for is, foreign investment uh, in that Russia. That is one aspect of investment. I mean, predictability is, uh, is important uh, uh, for, uh, for any economic activity uh, which is uh, inherently more complicated than the extraction of natural resources or of energy resources. So uh, whether it is conducted by uh, local players or it is conducted at least initially by uh, foreign companies in Russia, the, uh, the fact of uh, being able to count on a predictable system as regards laws, as regards tax policy uh, and all the other parameters is very important. And do you think that Russia is making progress? Because that's that's one of the main objectives of the modernization agenda it of the Russian authorities. It is making progress but much too slowly and uh, uh, in a volatile manner according to what I hear from many foreign companies. Uh, however sympathetic and investing in Russia they may be. One of the big objectives of the Russian authorities is also to um, increase the integration between uh, the Russian economy and uh, the European economy especially. And last year Prime Minister Putin even suggested the creation of a free trade area uh, and an economic union between both sides. Do you think this is realistic? Between Lisbon and, uh, and Vladivostok. Vladivostok. The grand design uh, is grand, is a design. Uh, its realism uh, cannot be excluded forever, but certainly this implies uh, many, many structural changes, including uh, one that I'm not sure Russia will be able to really pursue concretely in the short term. Uh, we have seen in our experience of European integration that the key factor uh, is uh, the willingness of uh, each member state to give up a portion of its sovereignty um, to make sure that European rules are applied by the European Commission as the watchdog of the treaty, by the European Court of Justice. And uh, uh, this is so uh, even more importantly if we go beyond the pure trade area and we go more deeply into an economic union. Because at that point you have these supranational bodies which uh, can, can and must have a say uh, also uh, regarding laws and application of those laws in uh, each uh, country uh, quite apart from the cross-border elements. So this is a, a tall order for a system like uh, the Russian system, uh, I hope they will wish to continue to pursue this grand design because on the road towards that grand design they will certainly have to give their own legal system, their own political system, much greater credibility uh, 
than they enjoy today in the common judgment. And uh, on a, this le a bit less uh, ground scale, Russia is actually pursuing the same integration strategy with uh, Belarus and Kazakhstan at the moment with the customs union. Um, how would you assess uh, this customs union, comparing it with what you just said about the European Union and what is needed to succeed? Well, it's interesting that they explicitly uh, refer to the experience of the European uh, uh, Union and uh, rightly so, they even try to get the best out of it. For example, they are aware that in some cases there has been an overburdening by regulation and they, uh, as some of that would put it, uh, uh, but this was also an argument of some uh, Central European uh, uh, now member states in the past candidate countries when they said that we, we had not left uh, the, 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 the Comic Con uh, uh, where we were instructed uh, from Moscow simply to uh, enter another system where we are similarly instructed out of Brussels. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's interesting that they see the value of economic integration uh, and see the importance of not pursuing it in an overly bureaucratic uh, uh, and uh, uh, repressing way. This is an important message also for us in Western Europe. At the same time, as I said a minute ago, I'm not sure they fully realize how much is required to really go down the road of economic integration in terms of changing domestic uh, legal and political systems. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, how difficult and in the end also how productive that path was uh, for the other former communist countries which uh, are now firmly and solidly members of the European and do you think um, they at least are making the right efforts to enter WTO? That's one of the major objectives. Um, they hope, the Russian authorities hope to uh, be able to join the organization by the end of this year, probably. Um, do you think they're on the I right way? It, that would be desirable for everybody. And uh, certainly they have been the, the longest waiting candidates uh, ever, but also for good reasons because they, they did have some real problems. So uh, they certainly count very much on this. Uh, they have the view that projects of uh, regional integration, like uh, their single economic space with Belarus and Kazakhstan, should not be considered as stumbling blocks vis-a-vis uh, -vis accession of the WTO. And there I'm rather sympathetic for this, uh, for their position. I've never seen regional integration as being per se uh, as a stumbling block towards uh, uh, multilateralism. It can be, but it can also uh, not be if it is uh, constructed uh, carefully and properly. I think the European Union for sure has been a, an important building block uh, of uh, a, a multilateral order rather than something making it more difficult. One last question. Um, as you said in the beginning of the interview, the main important uh, sector of Russia's economy remains the energy sector, yeah. especially in terms of exports. At the moment, this energy sector is uh, benefiting from a lot of uh, positive trends. Um, but some people say that it can also have a negative impact on Russia's economy because it can strengthen the resource dependency of this economy. Do you believe, uh, do, you, do you share this view? Uh, there is also the other side to everything, and undoubtedly uh, an economy which is overly dependent on a particular sector or on a particular resource uh, has weaknesses uh, through that. Of course, many countries would love to have the weakness of being uh, overly dependent from gas and oil, but uh, it may also be a weakness. That's why they try hard also to diversify, to go into services, to go into high technologies. And they are serious about this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.